Good day. Hope you all are doing fine. Let us dive into the topic of differentiating Bluetooth low energy product by exploiting and exploring the features in Zephyr Bluetooth low energy controller. My name is Vinayak and I'm a principal research and development engineer with Nordic Semiconductor. My primary responsibility has been as code owner and maintainer of open source Bluetooth low energy controller implementation in Zephyr project. So let's see what we will cover in today's session. We have a brief introduction to Bluetooth technology about some of the stable features in Zephyr Bluetooth low energy controller over the years, introducing the availability of direction finding feature, introducing the availability of isochronous channels feature, walkthrough of architectural challenges and changes in the controller to meet new features, and let's do some power profile of the broadcast and connected ISO samples. And uh, in the end, we can have a Q&A session. Okay, uh, what is Bluetooth? Bluetooth wireless technology is a short range communication system intended to replace the cables connecting portable and uh, fixed electronic devices. Um, it uses frequency hopping sped, sp sped spectrum um, and on the 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. Um, yeah, um, I, I would like to uh, state a fun fact about myself, how I got introduced to Bluetooth. There was this contract role that um, I had to interview for. Um, the day before the interview for contract role, uh, this was early in my career, um, I had quickly read up about Bluetooth and this is how I, um, I try to explain it. Um, assume um, I had uh, to listen to music on a FM receiver set and the music were part um, where parts of it were transmitted over um, a range of frequencies um, and I had to constantly quickly tune my receiver to these changing frequencies. Um, so basically the music was in small parts transmitted um, in different frequencies and I knew the pattern are uh, the next frequencies uh, that I need to tune into. Um, so that's how, uh, um, if it, yeah, if, if you can put it like uh, the frequency hopping. Um, so this is what, um, 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 as a very simple way Bluetooth operates uh, by, by sending uh, small packets um, at um, different frequencies. Uh, classic Bluetooth had 80, 80 radio frequencies or radio channels. Um, low energy uses 40, of which um, three are used for advertising. Um, they're indexed 37, 38, and 39. And uh, these three are spread um, in the 2.4 gigahertz band such that um, um, they don't uh, interfere. Uh, or even if one of the channels interferes, the other two uh, are placed uh, apart um, and um, would, would mitigate any collisions uh, when, um, when there are advertising. Um, um, of Bluetooth packets. Um, the, the most popular uh, solution areas um, which Bluetooth technology covers is um, like um, in, in the case of the uh, phone and um, you have any sensors or watch, then um, it's the sensor data transfer. Um, it's also used uh, for um, audio streaming. Um, Location services, uh, it could be detection of a device, um, proximity of a device, uh, direction of a device, or uh, um, also uh, distance. Um, something that is more popular these days is also mesh network like lighting systems and, and, um, and, and, and such uh, sensor networks uh, which, need, um, which need to cover substantial um, area. Um, as of today, there are billions of products shipped. Um, you, you can see that uh, when you buy a product or something that uh, has or uh, uses Bluetooth technology, you would see the uh, Bluetooth logo on it. Bluetooth device communication is either point to point, um, uh, broadcast uh, to many uh, in proximity, um, form a mesh uh, spanning vast area, increasing the reach. Um, 
Device positioning can be simple. Um, it could be like presence uh, detection or proximity. Um, proximity may use uh, uh, received signal strength indication. So in this case, you could like have like um, 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 alerts like low, medium, high, um, based on um, how close or far um, a tag or a sensor is from the uh, from your phone or um, a, a display unit or something like that. Um, or um, you can have a bit more uh, or like uh, direction estimation um, involving some calculations uh, of um, the angle um, of the received signals. Um, Bluetooth also uh, supports uh, uh, distance, distance measurements. If you're interested more about details of Bluetooth technology, um, states like broadcast, observer, and roles like central and peripheral, you can look up my other presentation some years back. Um, it has an animation of uh, how devices advertise, be scanned for, and uh, connections be established, etc. Also, um, it covers some details of the existing architecture and implementation of the then controller in um, the Zephyr project. What can you exploit today in Zephyr project? Bluetooth implementation in Zephyr project is version 5.3 compliant. The implementation is highly configurable, uh, configurable in supported features in your end product. Um, you can configure the buffer sizes, number of uh, buffers used, etc. Um, it's um, portable to all architectures supported by the Zephyr project, um, and uh, your builds can support host and configuration and uh, controller uh, configurations. Uh, like in this case, this is a combined build where you have the controller and the um, the application um, in a single firmware, or you could uh, build a HCI uh, controller only and uh, use HCI transport. Um, between the two uh, CPUs. Um, so in this case, it's actually a multi-CPU um, build. Um, so the host is uh, on one CPU and the controller implementation on the another CPU. Zephyr project supports a full um, Bluetooth host and also supports a mesh stack um, in the um, Zephyr project. Uh, product use cases. Uh, some end products that are and be designed effortlessly in Zephyr project using the vast number of samples are uh, beacons, eddy stone, uh, proximity tags, um, heart rate monitors, health thermometers, um, human interface uh, devices like keyboard, mouse, uh, remote controls, uh, sports watches that um, can um, store and transfer um, uh, vital uh, health uh, data and like uh, um, your heart heart rate and um, pulse and stuff like that. Um, they, they, they could use Bluetooth to transfer to your phone or to your PC, uh, bike equipments, um, bike computers, um, uh, which also can store sensor information and then be transferred on to PC or uh, mobile phones, activity track trackers like step counters, etc. Okay, um, let's explore Bluetooth low energy controller. Uh, what's new in the controller? Um, we now have support for long range. Uh, this again depends on the SOC uh, vendor, uh, whether they support coded phi. Um, so uh, there is now um, possibility of uh, transmitting Bluetooth packets uh, over a kilometer range. This is uh, also dependent on uh, advertising extensions. Um, advertising extensions also provide uh, periodic advertising in which case um, the advertisement packets are at uh, regular interval uh, to which um, a receiver can synchronize um, instead of uh, having a larger scan windows uh, to receive normal or legacy advertisements. 
in advertising extensions um, there are very short uh, legacy extended advertising pdus on the primary advertising channel which is the 37 38 39 um, if you have a lot of devices advertising um, it's always better to have small packets um, in that case the probability of collision is low um, so these these primary channel uh, Advertising PDUs point to larger 255 byte uh, advertising PDUs, um, and these 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 can be chained to have a total of uh, 1,650 bytes. So advertising extensions provides uh, both um, uh, longer advertising data that can be transmitted, um, advertising data that can be transmitted periodically, and um, with the uh, uh, mitigation. Uh, that uh, there is less collisions uh, while your devices are transmitting on the advertising channels. There is the um, support for uh, angle of arrival and uh, angle of departure. Uh, this is the direction finding feature. Uh, it again depends on the uh, SOC vendor whether uh, their um, radios support the constant tone extensions. Um, so these are these are the extensions to the. Uh, the um, Bluetooth low energy PDUs. Um, they contain the, uh, the direction information and uh, help in um, um, finding out the, uh, the angle um, of, of the devices around you. Uh, with the introduction of uh, low, uh, low energy audio, uh, the controller um, has implementation now for uh, isochronous channels, both uh, broadcast isochronous and connected uh, isochronous channels. Broadcast isochronous channel um, is, is, um, is a feature that uh, is required for uh, Bluetooth or a cast. The uh, connected isochronous channels are used um, mostly for audio streaming and for uh, uh, call uh, audio between the phone and the uh, earbuds. Um, also, uh, these isochronous channels ca can be uh, mul can be multiple uh, streams, and um, each stream could be to two different devices, like two uh, earbuds, one left and right, um, and um, Asynchronous channels have uh, um, features that help you synchronize between the left and the right um, uh, earbuds. Direction finding feature. Uh, any uh, low energy device can make its direction available um, for a peer um, device by transmitting direction finding enabled packets. Uh, so as you can see here, you can have a device with an antenna um, that's uh, transmitting uh, packets, uh, packets like um, containing the, um, the direction information. And um, you can have um, devices, uh, receiving devices, uh, which can um, either be uh, connected to the transmitting device and uh, transmit uh, information to the connecting device that um, indicate their positions, uh, locations in a room, etc. So you could have multiple uh, receiving devices that um, receive transmissions and uh, the receiving device can have antennas um, that uh, uh, detect the, the angle um, after reception of the packet from the transmitter. Um, the receivers can have a connection with the transmitter and let them know um, at what angle they have received the packet and uh, where these receivers are placed. That way, uh, the transmitting device can um, uh, be able to calculate its own uh, position um, relative to these transmitters. Um, it's also possible that uh, one of the, um, uh, the receiver here uh, is, uh, is having multiple antenna and um, this alone can also uh, show the direction um, towards uh, the, the transmitting uh, direction to the transmitting device. Um, there are two ways, uh, two methods in the uh, direction finding feature. One is the angle of arrival. Um, in this method, um, the uh, device uh, transmits direction finding enabled packets 
using a single antenna. So it's uh, it's like a tag that has a single antenna, but it's uh, transmitting um, directional information. Um, the other method is angle of departure. In this case, um, the transmitting device uh, compared to the previously the, the receiving device that had the antenna array and RF switch. Here, the uh, transmitting device has the RX RF switch and um, multiple antenna um, and um, is transmitting the, um, the uh, packets with the uh, direction information. While doing uh, so, it's uh, switching the antenna being used for the transmissions. Um, and uh, at the um, receiver side, there is a single antenna and uh, the uh, receiving device now uh, receives these uh, different uh, um, direction information um, transmitted over these uh, different antennas um, with these in, this uh, information in the uh, in the reception of these PDUs, it's then able to uh, calculate uh, the angle uh, of the uh, uh, the arriving um, radio signals. Some uh, product use cases of direction finding, asset management, um, account and keep track of critical resources in an establishment facility, indoor navigation and positioning, say have a map on your phone when inside a mall or shopping center, maybe um, locating facilities or labs inside a hospital, etc. Proximity marketing, um, uh, so uh, sending discounts and promotions when a customer is around or position near purchase. Point of interest information, facilities in airports, information details of items in museums and tourist attractions, personal tracking, um, like have, um, personals can have a badge or a tag uh, and um, uh, they could be tracked inside um, an establishment for uh, like safety reasons and uh, access control. Um, there's also the personal item finding. You could have your keychains, um, uh, bags with tags, and uh, direction finding features can be used to locate them. Also, uh, building an automotive access control uh, entry and exit to facilities and. Um, uh, unlocking and uh, locking of uh, cars and vehicles, etc. Another new feature available in Zephyr Bluetooth Low Energy Controller implementation is broadcast isochronous channels. The isochronous broadcast allows two or more devices to communicate in a unidirectional, connectionless manner by using extended advertising events, periodic advertising events, and big and this events. This can be clear text or encrypted. Um, between the two devices. Here we have an overview of broadcast isochronous group event. Every big event is identified by a preceding periodic advertising ox sync in PDU, which contains a structure called the big info. Big info structure contains the big offset, which is used by the controller to listen to big event and synchronize to the ISO interval of the broadcast ISO instance. What is new compared to normal ACL connection events or advertising events is the introduction of something called the sub events. Transmission on each sub event is on different radio channel. This provides frequency diversity. Each big event consists of a number of sub events where we have transmission, retransmission and pre-transmissions. Pre-transmission provides the time diversity along with frequency diversity. Product use cases for broadcast ISO. Synchronized data transfer or playback over large collection of devices placed apart in a location. Personal audio sharing, multiple earbud pairs listening to same media. Hearing aid tuned to audio sources in theater, conferences, lecture halls, and airports. 
A connected isochronous is a data symmetric or data asymmetric point to point logical transport between the central and specific periphery. Here you can see um, a phone and um, the phone establishes a bidirectional connection with the uh, left earbud and also uh, a phone establishes a connection with the right earbud. In this case, um, both uh, earbuds could have um, um, audio sync, which is uh, a speaker, and both could be having a microphone. So the, the data transfer or ISO data is transferred bidirectional from the phone. The uh, phone has the choice to um, um, record both the mics and probably apply um, an algorithm or any intelligence as required. Um, the other diagram here um, details how um, the phone establishes uh, an ACL connection. Um, thereafter, a cis um, within a SIG, and then a second ACL connection, and then the placement of the second stream, um, connected isochronous stream within the group. Um, Centrals can also have more than two um, streams and ACLs. Um, each group can have up to 31 uh, streams. Um, and um, the uh, limit on the streams uh, would be dependent on um, the available RAM and code space uh, on a vendor SOC. This is a detailed illustration of a connected isochronous group event. A SIG event consists of multiple SIS events. SIS reserves transmission reception periods known as sub-events. Each sub-event is spaced by sub-interval space. Transmission and reception happen on the same physical channel. And uh, two different sub-events use different physical channels. This provides uh, the frequency diversity. SIS supports variable flushing periods for payloads, variable size data contents, and a variable number of sub-events, following a range of isochronous data rates, latencies, and retransmissions. Retransmissions are realized by using sub-events per SIS. Uh, let's list down some broadcast ISO and connected ISO use cases, basically audio use cases, basic telephony, like receiving call, rejecting, uh, muting, unmuting when you are in a call, low latency audio from TV. So you could have um, a television um, with multiple um, audiences around and uh, uh, each one could um, listen in to uh, different um, uh, languages from the television. Um, and uh, more number of listeners in a large area. So like in a setup uh, in a club or um, a, a auditorium where multiple users can listen to the, um, the speech. Broadcast audio in public spaces um, like airports and museums, um, time synchronized sensor ecosystems. Typical use case of uh, early isochronous channels is early audio. Details of early audio support specifically in um, Zephyr project can be found in a prior presentation. Uh, this was done in the um, Zephyr uh, developer summit. Now let's dive into implementation architecture of the Zephyr Bluetooth low energy controller. Here you see the various execution contexts app, host, upper link layer, lower link layer, hardware, uh, basically timers, radio hardware, interrupt uh, manager, etc. The controller at the top level is split into uh, the upper and the, um, the lower link layer. Lower link layer is mostly uh, bare metal. Upper is implemented as um, threads, 
um, our um, low priority ISR our task lists. Um, the uh, low link layer uh, are usually implemented by radio vendors and uh, utilities that vendors uh, provide um, like um, HAL and low level implementations. Here we have a much uh, detailed block of the controller architecture um, and illustrates the ISO data send um, data flow. ISO data is enqueued in the thread context of the uh, host entity using memq data structure. So this is the host and this is uh, the link layer interface um, in the thread context. Um, once enqueued in the uh, thread context, uh, it is directly uh, dequeued in the uh, lower link layer. This is different from the, um, the ACL connection where enqueued ACL data is um, uh, processed in the um, upper link layer in the ISR context or a tasklet because uh, for the ACL um, there could be control procedures that will have to be enqueued uh, in the same uh, pipe uh, towards the packet controller or the radio hardware. In the case of ISO, um, the enqueued um, ISO data is directly uh, processed by the uh, packet controller or the uh, lower link layer radio interface since there is uh, uh, no concept of uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, multiplexing the control PDUs along in the same um, uh, radio transmission for the ISO. And in the return path, the acknowledgements are um, sent back uh, to the um, pre-thread context to be processed. This is now a detailed illustration of ISO data received data flow. Free um, ISO RX data buffers um, reside in a pool in the thread execution context and are populated or enqueued into um, a free RX packet queue. The lower link layer um, will dequeue these free RX buffers to be made available to the radio hardware. And then uh, the radio hardware will receive ISO data uh, from the peer. On reception of the ISO um, PDUs, these uh, valid or invalid PDUs, um, I say invalid in, because uh, there is possibility that uh, at a particular interval, um, there is collision or uh, there wasn't a sufficient audio data transmitted by the peer, in which case the controller will mark it as invalid, but still generate um, an event, uh, PDU event, marking its status as uh, invalid. If, if audio uh, has been sourced, audio packet has been sourced, uh, um, then in that case, the status would be set to uh, true. And uh, along with timestamp or enqueued towards uh, the HCI thread uh, to be thereafter copied into um, the host of other processing uh, by the uh, application. Uh, mostly if it is audio uh, encoded data, then be decoded and, uh, and then presented uh, uh, out to the user. Okay, uh, maybe it's enough of all the uh, talking and theory. Let's do something um, uh, fun and take a look at uh, how uh, the broadcast and connected ISO appear uh, in a power profiler. Let us now take a look at how our uh, broadcast and ISO um, channels appear on power profiling. Um, on our um, upstream samples. For this, uh, let us use the power profiler kit made by Nordic Semiconductor. So uh, this is uh, basically a profile view and a top view of how the uh, kit looks like. The uh, power profiler kit is a standalone unit, as you can see here, which can measure and uh, optionally supply current uh, all the way from sub microampere, um, as I has uh, one ampere to all uh, Nordic uh, development kits. In addition, can also be used with external hardware. Um, um, customers can have their own uh, custom boards and they can supply um, 
um, voltage from this kit are um, only measure like uh, the current consumed uh, consumed by the custom uh, PCBs. So um, what you see here is a typical ISO broadcast power profile. Uh, this is what you obtain um, when you have flashed the ISO broadcast sample on a 52833 um, development kit. In the green, you see the advertising extensions. Um, so the extended advertiser uses Advex 10 PDUs, which have an AUX offset that point to an AUX PDU in the future. In this profile, uh, you are seeing the, the, the profile of an AUX PDU uh, before the AUX admin. Um, that's because there has been one uh, before, there has been one Advex 10 before it that points to this. And um, there would be um, a periodic advertising PDU, which is not uh, visible in this profile here, but um, it is something that would uh, precede the, uh, the big event. Um, so here there is the big event and uh, each big event um, has a ISO interval of 10 milliseconds. Between uh, the big events uh, and if there is no periodic advertising or external advertising PDUs, then um, the CPU remains idle and it's in uh, um, like intense or uh, lower than 10 microamperes in the case of uh, uh, the 52833 development kit. Okay, now what you see is a power profile of the ISO receive uh, sample from the time it was powered on. So when the chip was powered on, it starts with uh, scanning. So there is uh, the scan window here. You can see the power consumption of the scan window and a scan interval. So there are these peaks that is the scan window and then uh, the next peak is placed um, a scan interval apart. Uh, so sample uses 60 millisecond uh, interval and 30 millisecond uh, scan window. It receives uh, advertising extension PDU here, or uh, ad report. Uh, in the ad report, there would be um, details of the periodic advertising. Hence, it will try to synchronize to the periodic advertising. Uh, this is a place where the periodic advertising is synchronized. In the periodic advertising, um, there will be the big info providing the big offset uh, to the big events. So the offset to the big events where um, the um, ISO receive uh, sample is supposed to synchronize with. So you will see that once the periodic um, report is received, uh, after 1.2 second, which is a periodic interval, um, the ISO receives synchronizes with the big events, and then you will see these peaks um, of the um, big events to which it is synchronized to. Uh, in the next slide um, of the ISO receive power profile, uh, which is nothing but uh, zoom in of the big events, uh, what you see here is. Um, the big event, um, which uh, contains two uh, broadcast ISO streams one and two uh, that have been synchronized to. Um, these, 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 uh, these peaks are the, the receive current consumption. So broadcaster has been transmitting big events with uh, two streams in it, and the synchronizer has synchronized, synchronized to it. Um, the ISO interval is 10 milliseconds, uh, so every 10 milliseconds you would see a similar power profile uh, where the, uh, the radio event is being prepared and receives the, the two uh, ISO uh, streams. Now let's take a look at uh, the peripheral ISO. This is the um, connected ISO use case. Um, the peripheral ISO sample starts with uh, advertising. Um, so these are the uh, current consumption when um, um, the advertising PDUs are transmitted. Uh, there is a central ISO sample in the vicinity that is scanning for it. And uh, when it finds the advertising uh, PDU, it establishes a connection 
um, when it has established a connection, there is some amount of CPU uh, running in parallel. Some control procedures that happen in the ACL connection. And um, one of these control procedure is to establish the, um, the sys. Um, so um, uh, at this point where you see a lot more peaks over here, these are the SIG events uh, that have been established uh, with the uh, central ISO sample. So um, as a periphery, it starts with advertising, gets connected as a control procedure to um, wherein the create sys request is received and accepted uh, and a um, sys in PDU um, with an offset, uh, sys offset would say where uh, the peripheral should uh, synchronize uh, with the central um, sys PDUs. Here you see a zoom in uh, version of the previous power profile of the uh, Peripheral ISO, in this case, uh, we have zoomed into where the sys is established. So to start with, there is the, uh, the ACL connection, uh, the reception by um, the peripheral, and then the peripheral transmits back on the ACL. Uh, at the instant where, uh, which was mentioned in the um, sys uh, int PDU, uh, which contains the offset, the peripheral would then um, synchronize with the SIG event. And every 10 millisecond, uh, it would be um, synchronized with the SIG events. And uh, these are the events where um, the peripheral would receive the ISO data and have an opportunity to transmit back um, ISO data towards the central. Now let us take a look at the um, central ISO power profile. Um, the central starts with uh, scanning. As you might have uh, seen in the previous slides for the peripheral, it starts with uh, advertising. Uh, the central scans for the advertising PDU and um, establish a connection here. Um, I have mentioned CPU here because when it has established a connection, there's some, some amount of CPU being used to uh, uh, perform um, um, GAT procedures like discovery, etc. Um, so the peaks continue here, uh, which are the ACL connections, and um, there will be at some point here the sys create control procedure where the sys request and sys response from the peripheral received, and then a six in PDU is sent from the central. And uh, at the instant, uh, the central uh, starts scheduling the SIG events. Here, uh, this is rather a zoom in version of the previous slide where uh, central ACL connection um, already established is uh, shown here and the instant at which the SIS is created. So, with the sys offset from the ACL connection, um, the central implementation schedules the uh, SIG events. Each of these uh, SIG events are 10 milliseconds apart. And um, in these events is where the central ISO would send uh, ISO data and uh, receive ISO data from the peripheral. Let's summarize in um, simple points this uh, presentation. Zephyr project has fully open source Bluetooth version 5.3 compliant host and controller. The controller, host stack, mesh stack, LE audio stack, services and profiles all are open source. These implementations are portable to multiple architectures um, that is supported in uh, Zephyr Autos. Contributions are by the community and uh, we have a very active developer interaction in interest groups, meetings, uh, mailing lists, and uh, chat over uh, Discord channels. Implementation changes continuously tested on pull request in CI using physical layer simulations. Frequent conformance testing by Zephyr project members. Best part uh, being the numerous samples very close to product use cases. Thank you.